Hey, hey space fans, I'm gonna move, it's so loud. Welcome to Spaceport America. I am here for Virgin Galactic's Unity 22 mission, which is going to launch in just an hour and a half, if all goes according to plan after the delay this morning. Now I'm walking away from where I was before because there was a very loud DJ on the mic because this is honestly like a huge, huge party. People are very excited. In just an hour and a half, Virgin Galactic's Unity 22 mission, ooh, you can see a little bit more, ooh, gorgeous, Spaceport America right behind me. Uh, you, <laughs> Unity 22 will see Sir Richard Branson along with three, <laughs> along with three other uh, mission specialists launching to space. This is going to be a suborbital test flight and it's going to be a pretty huge deal. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hello. Thank you for joining. I am here. If you're just joining now, I am here at Spaceport America. Uh, I am here on the other side of these press tents and guest tents. That's Spaceport America right there. On the other side is a huge stage where all the action's happening, but it's so loud that you would not be able to hear me. So I brought you out to see Spaceport America itself. Um, which is very, very exciting, at least for me. Um, so <laughs> here you are, here we are, an hour and a half, technically now less than an hour and a half until launch. Now, yes, the mission was actually supposed to launch right now. It was supposed to launch at seven local time or 9 a.m. Eastern, at least that's when the launch window opened. However, last night there was some inclement weather uh, and so getting that vehicle out of the hangar, they had to delay it just a little bit. But after that short delay, everything seems to be, seems to be on track and, and we are good to go. So we have some, ooh, some buses coming in behind me, some people arriving, more guests, lots of excitement. Uh, you know, we're again an hour and a half away. I can see below some of the comments popping up. If you guys have any questions, I would love to answer them. Um, for those, again, just joining us I'm at Spaceport America, uh, it's very beautiful, very exciting. I'm here at sunrise. I've been here since before sunrise. And in just an hour and a half, Virgin Galactic's Unity 22 mission will launch. Now, this is going to launch a space plane, Virgin Galactic's Unity space plane. Um, it's going to launch it oh, probably over 50 miles above Earth's surface. And there will be four mission specialists on board, one of whom will actually be Sir Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Galactic. Uh, also on board will be Colin Bennett, um, Sarisha Bandla, and Beth Moses. So it's going to be a full crew of mission specialists, two pilots, and they will be evaluating the experience for Virgin Galactic. Is it comfortable? Uh, can they move around? Can they do the research and experiments that they need to within the craft? Uh, you know, do they have to make any changes or anything else before passengers start flying when it goes fully commercial. Again, this is a test flight, but it does have a crew. Uh, so it, it's very, very exciting anticipating their launch. All right, AD asks, when are you guys going up? They're going up in an hour and a half. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be on board, um, but that crew will be going up in an hour and a half. Uh, in fact, I don't know exactly where he might be located, but on the premises is also Elon Musk. Uh, he actually just a few moments ago tweeted out a photo of him with Richard Branson together, uh, him wishing Richard best of luck on his journey to space, uh, you know, showing some good sportsmanship. All right. Yep. Lots of questions. If I don't answer your question, if you pop it in there, it's just because they're going fast and I didn't see it. So apologies. Um, yes, I see lots of excitement from all over the world. Um, the flight will not be that long. Uh, you know, this is not a flight into low Earth orbit. This is not a flight to the International Space Station or the moon or any off Earth destination like that. Um, it is simply a flight up to that altitude, which we don't know the exact altitude we'll reach yet, but likely over 50 miles above Earth's surface before landing back down on Earth. Um, now, you know, there are many definitions for what the boundary of space is. Uh, if you've been following this mission, you may have heard some discrepancies as this mission will not pass what is known as the Kármán line, which some people 
sees the boundary of space, which is about 62 miles or 100 kilometers above Earth's surface. However, uh, getting above 50 miles, getting above Getting to the altitude that they are going to get to today um, will earn the astronauts on board their astronaut wings. Um, as far as NASA, uh, the FAA, and the U.S. military are concerned, um, those on board who fly to that altitude are, in fact, astronauts. Um, so <laughs> that's a little explanation there. All right, uh, Christopher asks, how many people will be on board? Uh, so there will be two pilots on the mothership, uh, VMS Eve, that will take the space plane up. There will be two pilots on the space plane itself and then four mission specialists, um, which is kind of what you might refer to as the crew or the astronauts um, who will be the passengers strapped into the back. Uh, so this is, this is a huge first for Virgin Galactic, this crewed test flight. And they hope to do a couple more test flights before they start actually doing full commercial launches with paying passengers, which is estimated to happen sometime in 2022. Charles, when will tickets go on sale? Actually, um, for a few years now, people have been purchasing Virgin Galactic tickets. Um, they call themselves future astronauts, future flyers. Um, and so it's, it's, it's really, um, it's, it's been open for a while, but once all of these test flights happen and fingers crossed all happen successfully, uh, those future flyers and future astronauts will become flyers and will become astronauts. Um, yes, people are talking a little bit about kind of the Carmen line versus the okay, let me move closer to the press tent. Let me see if I can get a little bit of a better connection um, closer to the press tent whose Wi-Fi I am using. Oh, Slav asks, will they reach zero gravity? Yes. Um, so they will cross that boundary. They will get above 50 miles above Earth's surface and there will be a few moments where they are without Earth's gravity, experiencing microgravity like astronauts on the space station or astronauts you know, orbiting Earth would experience on their journeys. So they will have those moments of weightlessness. In fact, Sarisha on the mission, one of the mission specialists, has an experiment with her from the University of Florida that will take advantage of this weightlessness. Um, and it, this is also going to be a great test to see how easy is it to do a research experiment inside of the Unity space plane on this type of mission, which is going to be really helpful for scientists who would love to one day do experiments on suborbital flights like this. Now, in some of the comments I've seen and in my inbox and people are, you know, talking about how, yes, Richard Branson, billionaire launching to space, um, which everyone has different opinions on. Feel free to share yours down below. But suborbital flights are nothing new and crewed suborbital flights where researchers can be on board are actually an incredible tool for scientists. By being able to take your experiment into microgravity for those few minutes, however many minutes they may be, depending on the mission, you can collect incredibly valuable data. Uh, it, it's, it's really, really unbelievable what you can accomplish by putting specific experiments in space, and it's really valuable to science and for researchers. So even though, you know, however you feel about billionaires launching themselves to space or commercial space flight in general when it comes to space tourism, by supporting you know, suborbital space flight in general, it really is a vehicle for science, emerging science and experimentation off of Earth, um, which I think is really cool. Oh my goodness, you guys have so many, so many amazing comments and questions. Again, sorry if I don't get to them. You guys have so many wonderful ones. You need a tripod. Hey, if I, if I had a tripod, I wouldn't be able to walk around. I have a tripod inside. This is on purpose. Uh, I want to show you guys Spaceport America. If you're wondering what that kind of weird slanty building behind me is, that is actually Spaceport America. Uh, this white building is actually a temporary structure, um, as is the one next to it for press, media, guests of the event. Um, but actually, Spaceport America itself is kind of a tan, brownish, um, slanted, it really blends into the desert surrounding it. It blends into the environment around it, um, which is very, very cool. Uh, I think, in my opinion, just in terms of design, totally unrelated. Yes, wishing Virgin Galactic best of luck. Yes, I wish all of the astronauts as well a very safe, safe journey to space and back. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting. I, I'm so glad to see everyone everyone uh, sharing their excitement and sharing their good wishes for the crew. Um, yeah, yay! People here are also very excited, um, which is why I'm in front of Spaceport America. Um, in a few moments, I might 
uh, if you're lucky, take you all the way in back where the stage is. Uh, it is very loud. There's a DJ. There is now a band. Um, there was a kids dance contest. People are very excited. Um, <laughs> uh, someone asked, will kids be able to ride one day? I don't know. Uh, you know, obviously flying to space, it's not like getting on a roller coaster. And even roller coasters have height restrictions, age restrictions. Um, and so I'm sure that if and when, you know, something like this becomes more accessible to the general public, there will be some restrictions um, for the flyers, safety and health, etc. cetera. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it would be really amazing for kids to be able to go to space. Uh, Hey, Joe, I did mention the mothership. Yes, VMS Eve. Um, if you're just joining us now, uh, what the mothership is, also known as VMS Eve, is the ship that will take the space plane up to about 50,000 feet before letting it go. Um, at that altitude, it will drop the space plane Unity, uh, which will then rocket up to about 50 miles, uh, maybe more. We'll see exactly how high it goes above Earth's surface, um, which Again, there's much discrepancy, but is above, uh, it, it is above the altitude where, according to NASA, the FAA, and the U.S. military, those on board earn their astronaut wings. Um, so by many definitions, it is a boundary of space. It is different from the Kármán line in a lower altitude, but again, by many definitions, it is still a boundary of space. What time is launch? Um, yes, thank you, Adam, for helping out with that. It's about an hour and a half. Uh, it is. Uh, it was delayed an hour and a half from its original 9 a.m. Eastern start time. So we have now a 10:30 a.m. Eastern start time. Uh, so, so you know things got a little bit of a slow start. Uh, there was a little bit of inclement weather last night, but as you can probably tell, the weather is looking just fine now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the camera's shaking because it's on a because it's on a selfie stick, not a tripod, because. It's a moving event. I can't, I'm not allowed to stand in one place for too long. There's buses, there's cars, there's people walking. It's total, it's total insanity. All right, people asking about the time again. Um, I don't know when people are joining, but if you have information that I maybe answered earlier and you missed, um, there are tons of articles on space.com that we are continuing to update with times, etc. So yes, 1030 Eastern is when this thing is launching. It'll go up, it'll spend a little bit of time in space. It'll come back down. Fingers crossed, everything will be safe, sound, smooth, um, and everything will go well. Uh, so before I let you guys go, I will show you what's going on backstage. Very exciting, ooh, very exciting. Um, now, I'm taking you a little bit backstage, but it's allowed, it's fine, it just might get a little bit loud. Again, there is a DJ, there is a whole party happening people, and it's also very sunny and bright, I'm going to have to get my sunglasses, um, people are very, very excited about this launch. Um, there is a lot of excitement in the air, um, and in the crowd over there, there are also future flyers. Um, it, it's not just people excited about space, it's people who have either purchased tickets, um, there are people here who are part of the next crew. So it is very, very exciting. So behind me, the buildings, we got a little bit of a crowd over here, and then... You can see over these bleachers over here a little bit of a stage. Very exciting. <laughs> Ooh, we got a little bit of a quiet moment. That makes my life a little bit easier. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we've got media, we've got broadcast, TV, a huge stage over there. There's going to be some music later. And um, there was a band playing earlier and a DJ. Uh, so yeah, it, it's really amazing. And in just, I think, about 20 minutes or so, the astronauts are actually going to walk out. Um, so we are going to be really kicking things off, kicking things into high gear, and starting the countdown, essentially. Uh, so very exciting. Welcome backstage, everyone. This is backstage at Virgin Galactic. Um, secret press access, press tent, guest tent, cool stage. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to be popping on live a little bit later as well. And again, check out space.com. We have all kinds of information about the launch today and access to the live stream. There is a live stream of the event itself. Um, so you can see that online. Stephen Colbert is actually hosting it, which everybody loves. Who doesn't love Stephen Colbert? So whew, taking a deep breath. Thank you all for joining me. Let's launch this thing. <laughs>